Namaste beloved. I'm Akasha and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Um, I hope you all had a beautiful full moon. I definitely did some ritual and took advantage of all the cleansing, releasing energy um, going on right now and made sure to get some, some work in on my side. Um, and also happy Imbolc. If you celebrate Imbolc, I hope you had a wonderful Imbolc. Um, I'm here on the West Coast of California and it is definitely still chilly, but I did start noticing a few little buds on some of the flower bushes. So I kind of love when I can see the Sabbath lining up with what's happening in my environment. Um, it makes me feel a little bit more connected to celebrating. So yes, I definitely have been welcoming, welcoming back the sun um, in my life. I am not a summer girl. I am a spring and autumn girl. So I love it when, um, when we start heading towards spring. So today I wanna share with you guys, um, I wouldn't call this a haul, it's not a haul but <laughs> I normally get the Witch's Roots box, um, subscription box monthly. I've shared one of these uh, before in unboxing, but I upgraded to the Witch's Moon and I'm so excited. Um, I've been getting the Witch's Roots box for a couple of years now um, and I just felt like I wanted to, um, I wanted to compare and I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to upgrade to the larger box and just kind of see, um, you know, what the differences are and, and all of that. Um, it is a little bit more expensive. I believe in the United States, I pay about $30 for this box or maybe a little bit more. Maybe it's 39. I don't recall. Somewhere between 30 and $40 for this box and then somewhere between 50 and 60 dollars for 50 to 60 dollars for this box forgive me i will look look it up before i publish this video but i do believe it's oh i've got an ant on me <laughs> oops there you go little bug <laughs> uh, i do believe this box is 30 and this one is 50. so you know new year new challenges for myself um, as a witch and so I thought I would upgrade my supplies box and yes it is 1 30 I'm not drinking alcohol <laughs> I'm having coconut water which is another one of my favorite beverages very hydrating so okay which should we open first let's do this one first um, I'm gonna open this and share just a little bit about what's in here um, and then we'll do the comparison. I think they're both for the same month. I think they're both for March. So we shall see um, how they compare. But, okay. So I did, when you order this box, it's gonna come in a plastic, little plastic uh, outer covering. Um, I recycled the plastic already. I didn't wanna waste time cutting into the, cutting into the pouch on camera. So, um, just know. Okay, so, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so for the, the Roots box, the theme is Traveling Earth Altar. And you'll get a little sheet that just kind of tells you about what's in here. I know you can't read that, I'm just showing you. Um, so I'm not gonna read everything on here because we'll be here way too long, but I will just read the kind of opening thing that, the opening blurb that tells you kind of what to expect in the box. So easy it is to become disconnected from the most necessary form of nurturing available to us, the earth. As you pass through bustling sounds, notifications, concrete structures, and constant reminders, you will find that just the path is the greatest comfort of all. In a world of nonstop distractions, it is vital for our practice and well-being that we foster the intimate relationship between self, silence, and sanctuary. I love that, I love good writing. We are so thrilled to finally release this wonderful collection, The Traveling Earth Altar. Within this unique variety of items, you will find companion pieces that are meant to travel with you wherever you go, allowing you to stop and reconnect to the essence of nature 
and the comforting and grounding energies of great Gaia. The magical items in this box are as follows. Exciting. I love this because right now I do not have like a mini altar in my purse. And I love how, um, you know, I've watched videos of people putting together their traveling altar. And I do have a travel um, a travel kit, a little travel altar. I've, I've, I think I've done that on, on one of my videos before, just kind of showing what's in there. But I don't usually carry that around with me every day. I just will take it if I'm specifically going out into nature to do ritual. If I'm going to the beach or something and I think that I, you know, I'm going to do some working while I'm out there or something. Um, so I like the idea that they put together already a little traveling altar for me and I can, maybe it'll be small enough that I can just put it in my purse. So we'll flash some of the stuff. So they always give you, um, well, lately they've been giving out um, like oracle cards that they meditate on um, for you. Uh, and this one is called Feminine Inspiration. It's like um, an older woman and a younger woman, I'm assuming. Find strength in your sisterhood. Oh, I love that. I love that because I've been thinking a lot about my chosen sisters. So that's the little card. And then they give you um, Book of Shadows artwork. and. I'm thinking maybe on like one of my next videos, I'll show you what I've been doing with these because I have actually been collecting them. Um, I'm finally getting <laughs> further through putting together my newer Book of Shadows that I started a couple years ago. Um, there's no rush on it. But anyway, so I do keep these and I do put them in the book. So I will, I might show that. So this one is the Earth Goddess. An earth goddess is a mythic deification of earth. They are often associated with the fecundity of the land, the forces of nature, maternal aspects, and chthonic, oh yes, that's a C, chthonic themes of the underworld. That's really pretty art. It's like a, this is something I feel like I could frame and put up like actually over my altar. We'll see. Um, and then the herb for this box, there's always an herb, is mustard seed, which, let's see where the mustard seed is, is in here. And I will say that it is pretty, um, it's pretty, uh, you can recycle a lot of what's in here. I like that they use paper instead of a lot of plastic inside here, even though they do use bubble wrap for things. Um, I think that's a necessary evil, but this can also be recycled. So I do that. Um, mm -hmm. um, where's the mustard seed? I don't see the mustard seed. Here it is. Mustard seed. And I think I shared on the last video when I talked about this stuff that this is kind of the main way that I replenish my herb cabinet at this point. Um, I only kind of go out and get the things that I use up more frequently, like rose petals, um, jasmine, lavender, those kinds of things. But everything else, I just use whatever comes in this box because so many magical things can be used, you know, for multiple purposes. You don't have to always have exactly the herb that is listed in whatever grimoire you're looking at. So a, a few of the properties about mustard seed, um, it resonates with air and fire. It's connected to the sun. Um, it rules the root and solar plexus, third eye and crown chakras. Um, let's see, magical properties. An ancient spice and curative condiment, mustard seed boasts more than 40 restorative properties from pulses and plasters to infusions, baths, liniments, and antiseptic solutions. Ancient medical texts mention using mustard seed to treat money ail many ailments. I was going to say money, money ailments. <laughs> Biblical references proclaim mustard to be a symbol of faith, protection, and good fortune. Carrying mustard seed protects from disease, especially headaches and colds, severs unwanted energetic attachments. I already know one thing I'm going to do with it. And wards against malefic entities. Interesting. A sachet of mustard seed may also 
amplify one's fortune, courage, and motivation in some folk traditions. That's interesting. So I practice hoodoo, um, and I'm super fascinated, or I should say conjure, whatever, however you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm super fascinated to see if this is also a seed that's heavily used in um, African-American folk tradition, um, spiritually. Okay, what else is in here? We've got some tea, Gaia mint tea. And they gave you, uh, or me, <laughs> me, they gave me a little, um, a little muslin um, tea baggy to pour these in. And I do actually, I like these, I like these, but I, I usually use the little metal, the little metal, like, what do you call it? Double, double spooned that clasps and hangs onto your cup. I like to use those better, but um, what I do use these for, FYI, this is a great thing to know. Um, when you get these little muslin tea bags, you can use these to put herbs for your spiritual bath. Um, you can take a bath in your, the herbs that are, you know, you're using for cleansing yourself or whatever you're doing a bath for. Um, and then that way you don't have to like dig out all the herbs from your tub when you get out of the bath. So I do actually use it for that. I might sprinkle a couple of the herbs on top of the water just so that I really feel like they're touching my skin. But as long as they're in the water, this is just a way to like, you know, not cause a clog in your tub. Um, let's read a little bit about this tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, they gave us unikite. That's dope. Um... Gaia Mint Ritual Herbal Tea with Muslin Bag. We have included this wonderfully earthy and sweet Gaia Mint Ritual Herbal Tea to this collection to relax and unwind you. This unique blend has been created with peppermint, licorice root, and cloves. Mm. Take time to sip this fragrant blend as you connect yourself to the source of all things. Mm. Okay. I will say that I'm not good at using up their teas quickly and then I end up with like four of these in my cabinet at once. Not because I don't drink them, but because I literally have so much tea and I'm still considering getting a tea subscription. It's hard to go, it's hard to finish all the tea, but I like it. Oh, that smells really, really, really good. Okay, I have been on a decaf tea kit, so this definitely is going to, um, Okay, now that I saw Unikite on there, I want to see the Unikite. Oh, get out of here. They gave you... Okay, I will wait to pull that out. I need to go in order. They always give you a little... Um, a little... What is this called? Ah, I forget what this is called. Organza. They always give you a little Organza bag. I keep these to use as mojo bags, honestly. But, okay, Unikite. I love Unikite. I do actually have... Uh, a couple pieces of Unikite, one like this and another that's uh, on a bale that you can wear as a necklace, but I really do like this stone. So, hey, now I have two. I might gift one to someone because I believe in that. Um, Unikite is a stone of urgency. Um, it's the here and now stone. The energy of this stone reminds us to lose ourselves into the work into our work, into our inspirations, and into the creation. Unikite pushes us to stop wasting time, to take what life gives us, and move forward with steady action and natural momentum. I like that. I could see um, using this um, to amplify your... Um, um, Gosh, words are escaping me. I did not have enough caffeine this morning. Um, I could see using Unikite to amplify your um, the intentions that you set on your um, your vision board for the year. Maybe, um, you know, so one thing that I did was I wrote down all of my, um, all of the things that I'm envisioning um, creating for myself this year. I could see putting this on top of the paper and like rolling it up. Um, to help that to push those things along or I might even plop one down or hit we're in my office so I might even plop one down by my desk since I realize I have two now um all right 
So this is a, an oil. This is um, Rose Magical Anointing Oil. Um, blended to enhance the beauty and inspiration that flows through your daily practice. Know that you are one with the natural life force of the earth and that it all surrounds you. A sense of love and passion into your workings. And there's rose quartz chips inside. I love rose. Rose is literally one of my favorite smells. I mean, on like the top three. Um, I love rose oil and I love anything that smells like roses. So I'm really excited to have this. Oh, it spilled a little bit. Usually they don't. This is actually the first time this has ever happened in one of my boxes. It spilled a little. Oh, but it smells so good. I'm just gonna wipe it on myself. Why waste it? It smells really good. I'm gonna wipe it on myself. <laughs> Bring that self-love in right now, right? Why not? Uh, okay, and I'm gonna fix the top. There we go. There we go. That smells beautiful. It smells so good. Yeah, so you just get like a two ounce um, bottle of oil. It's anointing oil. You can use this on your candles. Oh, there's rose petals inside. Yeah, there's rose petals and crystals inside. It smells really beautiful. We're coming to the end of this box, guys. I'm going to move this along a little because I know we're going to look at the next box. I didn't mean to say guys, my friends. I love it. Um, we got some sticks of jasmine. How many do we get? Because I'm going to compare. I'm going to compare the boxes. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sticks of jasmine, which is nice. I've never done this before. I always just use what's in the box. I like it. Um, and I don't know what this empty Ziploc is for. What is this for? This is not. Empty Ziploc. We have included an empty three by three bag for you to include any herbs that you may want to incorporate in your traveling altar. This can include mustard, rose petals, jasmine buds, lavender, etc. We recommend including herbs that bring you the most comfort and serenity. Uh, I'm gonna put some life everlasting in here because I love having that in my travel altar. And they gave us a little sachet, a little velvet baggie. Um, velvet carry pouch. This velvet, this green velvet pouch has been included for you to place all your altar items inside of. Carry this with you throughout your day. When you feel disconnected, find a private space to lay out your altar, ground your energies, and collect your thoughts. You know what? When I worked outside of my house, this would have been dope to pull out when nobody was around me at my desk. Just needed a coconut break. To pull this out and have like these nice little like stones and the oil and all this stuff and be able to like ah reset my intentions and stuff and I worked in a really toxic environment y'all like I should I could probably do a video on you know using your magic to survive a toxic environment if anybody's interested in seeing that I would do it okay and they give you a candle a ritual candle in every single one and I love this because the quality of the candle is really nice it's always a beeswax candle. Oh, this is a cool color. It's like a lime green. That's pretty, I like it. Sometimes they have herbs on them and they're already anointed. Sometimes they're just plain. Um, I like that it's plain because you can use it for whatever you want if it's gonna be in your traveling altar. I love that. Um, we're down to the last two items. So, where is this? Did they say anything about the candle? Mm -hmm. Mini spell candle, growth. Oh, celebration of growth. We've hand rolled this celebration of growth mini spell candle with the intention of providing space and time to appreciate your blessings. 
celebrate the small victories and recognize the never ending growth of yourself and all that surrounds you. Love it. All you would need is like, like something to sit this on, but I wouldn't recommend like doing something like this in your office or what have you, but um, I'd probably do a birthday candle instead if you're gonna do something tiny like that. Um, but I do love this and I definitely will, will, will burn this for some other purpose. Um, okay, last item I peeked. It says it is um, a mini Gaia. Mini Gaia, yeah, Gaia statue. This small Gaia statue is a wonderful representation of the earth in form of mother. I've always wanted a big Gaia statue. I have one of her that's a wall plaque. <gasps> I'm instantly in love with this. This is so cute and tiny. Isn't that nice quality? You guys, all this for $30? I don't know. Um, it's beautiful quality. This is definitely going in my travel altar. I love this. That's gorgeous. Okay, so that is, let's see. If I can, let me move my water. My water. That is everything that came in our box. So we got Gaia, the candle, oil, incense, tea, mustard seed, a crystal, the Unikite crystal, and we also got, sorry if that made y'all dizzy, we also got, um, I'm getting used to setting up in my office, we'll see if this works, it might not, um, and then the, the artwork. So, moving on, and I'm probably going to move through a little faster, we're opening the witch's moon. Everything is a little bit bigger, except I think the one piece, of, one piece of the art is still the same size. So this one we got, um, we also got a, um, an Oracle card. Transform old situations into new possibilities. Let go of the past and become the present. Nice. So let's see. This one is, I'm noticing the difference already. So there's an extra sheet of paper that's blank, which I believe is to allow you to do, um, to write an intention if you're doing, yep, blank parchment page. We believe that writing down your intentions and goals pushes you further, further in accomplishing them. We've added an additional piece of paper to the back of this ledger for you to write down your intentions before your rituals so that you may add it to your own personal book of shadows. So that's one difference is they want you to, they want you to write your spells down. <laughs> um, so this whole box is named the will of a witch. As the comfort of winter dreams begin to fade, we are faced with our most crucial moment yet to capture the essence of growth and transformation that is gifted to us during this important season. Just as the sun continues to grow above the endless skies, our potential for life-changing momentum and change are here for the taking. She goes on and says some beautiful things. Um, I cast my intentions to the spirit sea. May the waves of manifestation forever find me. Wonderful. Um, okay, so we got some artwork. And the artwork has got some hieroglyphics, so maybe it's on the uh, Egyptian kemetic artwork. Um, and it's the same um, the same poem I just read. Um, so this is what is this? Oh, cast my intentions sigil reference artwork. So it's a sigil. So sometimes what I do is I will copy this in my um, copier when they give us sigils and then cut it out on the copied page so that I can put the um, sigil on my um, 
on whatever I'm writing my intentions on for the ritual. So that's probably what I will do with that. Um, and then there's a bigger piece of artwork. So this would be something that goes in my book of shadows. Um, I have a smaller grimoire where I keep all of these herbs, herb pages, but this one would go in my book of shadows. Um, that's larger. I like this artwork. Spirits of Prosperity. So this whole one is about prosperity. I like this. And it's all the names of spirits related to prosperity. So Roman goddess is Abundantia, Ajay in Yoruba, Asase Ya in Ashanti, Benzetin Shinto, Kaishin Chinese philosophy or mythology, sorry. Felicitas Roman. Feronia, Roman, Fortuna, Roman, um, Ganesha, Hindu, Janus is the Roman god of coinage, Lakshmi. Nice, interesting. So it's just a whole list of deities associated with prosperity. And then the tea in this one is Apricot Alley. It sounds like a morning tea. Or maybe what I'm about to have right now. Oh, yummy. Interesting. It's very like floral, even though it's got fruit in it. It's very floral. Let's see, Apricot Alley. Where is that? Um, I don't see the T. Am I overlooking it? Hmm. Am I cray cray? What's happening to me? Why can't I see the T? <laughs> What's wrong with me? I don't know. There's nothing on the back. Okay, I'm probably overlooking it because I'm looking too fast, but we'll figure it out it's tea and then again I've got another little muslin and calendula petals okay so I do notice they give you a bigger bag so well this one because you see how much herbs you get so that's one thing that's different is you get more herbs. And this is calendula. I love calendula. I always think of it as a nourishing tea, or not tea, but sorry, a nourishing herb. Um, something that's good for like soothing mentally or emotionally. Let's see what they say about calendula. Um, I always like to compare what I use something for and what you know, other witches may use it for. I found the tea. <laughs> okay, a wonderfully warm and stimulating blend. The Apricot Alley Ritual Herbal Tea um, cultivates the energies of contemplation and inspiration. It's got marigold petals. That's why I smelled flowers. Marigold petals, cinnamon chips, dried apricot. Delicious. Okay, calendula. Um... Calendula or marigold originated in the Mediter Mediterranean areas, Europe and some parts of Asia, being named after the first day of the month, Calends, huh. when they were known, <laughs> known to bloom. And an overall symbol of joy and happiness, calendula was used in many ancient ceremonies, including the Romans and Greeks, making garlands of the flowers to celebrate. Also the Indians or South Asians. This beautifully radiant flower assumes the full sun position and prefers to bask in its light and warmth. As you work with this herb, allow the radiant energy to pass through you so that you may also bask in the illumination of the sun. Dress your candles in this herb, include within magical sachets, or simply incorporate into your altars of growth and transition. So both of these are about growth and like prosperity and the earth. I love that. Okay. Um... And then they gave us a spirit swelling sacred salt. 
So this you throw into your bath and you take a little, you take a little, a little cleansing bath. Um, where is that? Spirit calling salt. Um, the salt is meant to bring a sense of inspiration and excitement to your spiritual workings. Okay. Um, if you get stuck in cyclic battle of stagnant emotions, um, this can be used to relax your thoughts and foster energies of newness and revitalization. So this would be perfect to do before you're going to do a spell for prosperity, which I guess that's what they want us to do. It's just some money making. And we got a spray called road opener. I love that road opener and it comes with a little spray um, nozzle that you can attach. Um, well, let me just put it in there because I'm going to take the top off anyway. That smells really good. I feel like I smell mint and I feel like I smell roses. Not roses. What am I saying? Um, rosemary. Mm. Lemongrass. Um, road opener ritual aura spray. Um, created with the intention of attracting opportunities, breaking down barriers. The spray is a perfect companion during the months of growth ahead. Orange peppermint lavender lemongrass and a special mixture of our attraction magical oil. Nice. This is definitely something I would add to my prosperity situation on my altar. As this is my, this is a part of my altar. The top is ancestor, and the bottom is um, mostly where I do most of my like prosperity working, spirit communication, that kind of stuff. So this would be perfect to have there. I'm gonna move it away a little bit because you know we got fire. <laughs> I already have a prosperity candle going. A money drawing candle going. Um, ooh, okay, so we have a little, we have a little talisman, a little, um, it's jewelry. So this is like a little, um, I believe this is probably pewter with a necklace attached and it's a, a seal. I don't think it's a sigil. I think it's just like a seal, um, but the symbol is for career success. With fire, water, earth, and air by the four points of the compass square, power to success to huh? power to success in my career. Complete success fills my sphere. So mode it be. Yeah, I guess if you're gonna do career working, um, right on. That's neat. That's neat. And then some pretty big things in here. So same, same amount of incense. And this one is Copal. Oh man, I love me some Copal. That's on my list. That's on my list, my friends. When I was saying roses, roses, lavender, Copal. I love Copal. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite incense. It just leaves my whole home feeling like I, I walked through a temple. Like it makes everything feel more like, I don't know, like I'm in a cathedral. Um, okay. Oh, whoa, what is this? Mm. Altar cloth, triple moon altar cloth. That's beautiful. Triple moon altar cloth. Um, this is really pretty. I don't know where I'm gonna put it quite yet, but I love it. Maybe I would add, you know where? I know what I'm gonna do with it. I am gonna add this to the traveling altar so that when I set up somewhere, I have a beautiful cloth to set all my things on top of. 
look at how you can just roll it up nice and small and stick it in that little pouch. I love that. That's beautiful. All right, we're coming to the end again. So we got a candle. And, okay, you're going to see the difference in size. <laughs> Already, this box has paid for itself. Holy crap. Look at the difference in size of these two candles. This is like, this would take a whole day to burn. I'm sure this would take, well, maybe not a whole day, but this is definitely like a four, four or five hour burn, maybe. Because these ones, when I do these, these take at least like two hours. This is a big candle. Okay. I love the smell of beeswax. Like my cats. <laughs> they smell everything really fast. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Large inten intention casting anointed beeswax candle. We have hand rolled and anointed this candle with the purpose of bolstering your intentional impact during your ritual work. As you allow the flame of this candle to dance before you, concentrate on where you are, what you're doing, and the deep reason for its importance. Um, and this is all about the intentions of prosperity, blessing, abundance, all of that good stuff. This can include cleaning, cleansing, and setting the tone. This candle has been enchanted with ginger and orange oils, as well as our open door magical anointing oil. I love that. I think I already know what I'm going to do with this candle, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I got to I got to I got to do the work first and then I can tell you about the spell work that I did once it manifests. You know what I mean? That's that's a part of being silent, right? When you do your spell work is you don't want to tell everybody what you're doing. Do it and then talk about it later. Okay. Whoa. What? You guys. This is a white honey onyx candle holder. I've never even heard of white honey onyx. Wow. White honey onyx. And it's specifically so that you can put this candle in it. Wow, that is neat. Or I guess you could put like, you could put a tea light. You could put, um, I would think you could probably also fit like a, like a votive. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna melt the bottom of this a little bit. And then when you stick it, then it sticks. And then you put your herbs around. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. It's gonna fall down because I didn't light it yet. But here, I'll show you. That's gonna work. Whenever you, I mean, obviously I'm sure people know this, but whenever you have a candle holder that's too wide for your candle, you can just melt the bottom, especially if it's beeswax, because it not sound really easy from the mouth. Okay. Um commonly referred to as the sibling of marble. Onyx carries many names, including, but not limited to, um, Onyx Marble, al Egyptian Alabaster, and Mexican Onyx. <laughs> There's a lot about it here. <laughs> onyx comes from the Greek word claw um, for thousands of years of manifestation. Wait, I read two different sentences. <laughs> Um, interestingly enough, the word onyx comes from the Greek word claw for its natural white and honey color. Onyx has a deep and rich history, one which has appeared in ancient Rome and ancient Egypt. It's a wonderfully tranquil and peaceful stone. Reduces stress, brings about an overall sense of well-being and security. I love that. I love that they gave you like, gave us. A big old thing to just burn candles in. Like, I love that. 
Ah! <laughs> okay. Um, that is it. That's everything in this box. So, um, going forward, I won't be getting... I took a break from the, the Roots box because I don't want to oversaturate myself with... Um, with like ritual ingredients that I don't use all of um, right away and then it just piles up. So I only want one box at a time. So I'm gonna experiment with getting the Witch's Moon box for a while and see if I prefer getting this box. So I gotta say today, I feel really happy and inspired to work with the items that I was given from both boxes. Um, I just thought this would be helpful if you're considering like, you know, getting one of these boxes and deciding which size you want. And it's tempting to only get the smaller one because of the cost. So I just thought I would show you the differences between the two so you can kind of make the decision that works best for you. But I think you got a sense of the difference in the boxes. You know, some of the pieces, some of the offerings are larger. Um, the amount of items you get are larger. Um, the smaller box, or I should say the roots box. Um, as I said, I've gotten it for the last couple of years, probably going on three. And I, I mean, I loved it that much that I got it for three years. So this has just been a, um, a recent thing where I decided to just kind of play with the, the moon box for a while. There is um, another tier called the Witches Roots Moon. It escaped me. It escaped my mind because like I said, I need some more caffeine. But um, there is one more tier. Um, um, that has like, I think more crystals and things of that nature in it. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting tools because I have noticed when I've looked at some of the Witch's Moon boxes online, um, they might give you, you know, um, a bowline or uh, a wand or something. So I'm kind of like, oh, that would be really interesting to get a tool in one of these boxes. But I think right now I would say my favorite in the Roots box is this adorable, beautiful artwork um, that is Gaia. Um, and then in the Witch's Moon box, my favorite right now is this candle and onyx holder combo. Um, but also I really love this cloth. I don't know. I love all of it. <laughs> so I will be coming to you again um, probably in another week or two um, and we'll talk about other items spiritual. Um, I've definitely been regrounding into other parts of my practice that I don't speak about as much uh, on this channel but um, yeah so I'll start introducing some other some other things that I'm interested in as a spiritualist, as a witch, as an esotericist. And um, I hope that the rest of this month, because I don't think I'll be back before the beginning of March, but could be, I could be. Um, I hope you are all doing really well and that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Blessings. <laughs>